Hey everyone, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thrilled to be with you for another presentation as part of our top 10 influential market events of 2021. First and foremost, I want to thank you for tuning in to this presentation. Thank you for checking out the rest of the uh, market event presentations that we have been doing at the end here, wrapping up 2021 on a high note with this two week special here. Also want to thank the Stock Charts TV team for having me on. You know, when the team reached out to me and said, hey, Grayson, here's what we're doing at the end of the year. We're getting 10 experts together to discuss influential market events from the year, reflect back, think back on the charts, think back on what's happened and highlight, you know, one of the things that stands out to them. We want to have you on what comes to mind. There was no question in my mind. One specific thing stood out. And of course, that was the strength that we have seen out of semiconductors. So that's what we're going to talk about today on this presentation, semiconductors powering their way to record highs throughout 2021, really building off of the price action that we saw in 2020. Now we're going to look at this from a couple of different angles. We're going to hit the semiconductors group from a couple of different angles, a couple of different time frames, and a couple of different ways to look at this. But what we're talking about today is this strength that we have seen out of this all important group in the tech sector here in 2021. Now, I love what Dave Keller likes to say about semiconductors. This is a group that a lot of us watch very, very closely, but Dave is always one who says, I watch semiconductors because it's an important barometer of sort of the uh, the positioning in the market, the, uh, the offensive flavor in the market, the risk appetite in the market. When we see semiconductors strong, we just feel good about the market. This is an important part of the technology sector, uh, but also just kind of an important gauge of how investors, how traders are feeling. Are we positioning more towards offense, positioning more towards defense? So when we see semiconductors leading the market, which is something that we have seen here in 2021, we have seen a ton of strength out of semiconductors. That is just very, very bullish for the market overall. Uh, very sort of growth oriented, very offensive, and just makes you feel good about this market when you see the leadership coming out of semiconductors. Now, we're going to start here with SMH. SMH is a tradable ETF. This is an ETF that you can buy. It's a great way to play semiconductors if you're interested in this group. Full disclosure, semiconductor is a position that I do have and have had for some time through SMH here. So uh, something, uh, something to check out, though. That's kind of the way that I typically like to look at semiconductors, though. I typically like to use SMH as a, as a gauge of semis. What we're looking at here on this chart, our first stop, is a year-to-date chart here of semiconductors in ACP. And a very simple chart here. We're actually doing something uh, kind of stripped down, not a ton to this chart. Of course, we can see the uh, the price chart in the middle there with a couple of key moving averages. But what we're really highlighting is actually the panel up top. Now, I mentioned that semiconductors have been a leading group. Semiconductors have been outperforming the market. And that's what we can see at the top of this chart, which is a relative strength line. So as you can see here in the label, we have the uh, SMH ETF. We have the semiconductors group versus VTI. VTI is the Vanguard total stock market represents the uh, the total US market. So when this line is moving to the upside, that means that whatever symbol in the middle of the chart uh, that we have up there is outperforming the market. When this line is moving lower, as we were back here, that means that this symbol is underperforming the market. Now, this is a year to date chart. So we're looking from the start of the year up until now. And as of this recording, we have semiconductors outperforming the total market. If you look at it through the SMH lens by about 14% great outperformance here from this group. And what's interesting is that we've actually chopped around quite a bit to get there. This has not been a linear move. This has not been just a one directional. We are going up and up and up. Uh, we've actually chopped around here a little bit in semiconductors. You can see uh, we had been kind of drifting sideways at the start of the year. We broke out a little bit above that range, but then that uh, sort of continued to uh, to drift sideways after that kind of initial breakout uh, back here in kind of the middle of the year, the uh, the summer months. Now that has changed though. Come October, we really started to fly higher in semiconductors. So a lot of this strength that we've actually seen out of that group uh, has come in the last couple of months of the year. Now, technology as a whole obviously has stumbled a little bit in 2021. 
not the uh, the dramatic outperformance that we saw out of 2020, not the dramatic outperformance that we've seen in other years. This is year two of a new bull market coming off the uh, the COVID lows in March of last year, and uh, and, and as we typically do uh, see in uh, you know in, in year two of a, a bull market, a young bull market there we typically see the markets kind of chop around a little bit. So we saw a lot of strength coming out of, uh, of technology last year. Saw a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors last year, but it has not been just that upward move for technology as a whole. Still though, semiconductors have been incredibly strong. Uh, again, outperforming the total market by about 14% this year, even though a lot of that has come kind of in the uh, the end of the year. So this is something that sticks out to me, that continued strength that we have seen out of semiconductors. And if we actually pull up a little bit longer term view, here is a two year chart now of semiconductors. Again, you know, I like to say that uh, when, uh, when semiconductors are outperforming, you just feel good. Something that's reiterated by a lot of technicians like Dave Keller, as we mentioned. So over the last two years, we have seen massive outperformance by the semiconductors group. We can look at that same relative strength line up top here. And so over the last two years, we've seen SMH actually outperform the total market by about 46%, nearly 46%. And when you consider that that outperformance by 46% is on top of a market that has had two very, very strong years overall, that is serious outperformance. We have seen a lot of buying, a lot of interest, and a lot of upwards movement here in the semiconductor space. Looking down below also, we do have the scooter score for, for, uh, for the semiconductor ETF SMH. So the scooter is our stock charts technical rank basically a way to measure technical strength within a group. So in this case, SMH being an ETF, this is part of our uh, US ETFs group. What we can see here is that although we did have a, you know, a little bit of a stumble in, uh, in sort of 2021 here, a couple times in 21, over the last two years really, SMH has spent a lot of time at the top of those scooter ranks. So really has been a favored group overall. And we see that of course reflected in the outperformance and the strong trend, the strong move higher that we've seen out of semiconductors really over the last couple of years. Now, I mentioned though that we're gonna look at this in a couple of different, uh, from a couple of different perspectives, a couple of different angles. One of the knocks, speaking of SMH specifically, one of the knocks that people have against SMH is the outsized weighting of one particular stock, that being Taiwan Semiconductor. So the largest holding in this CTF, we can, uh, can see this screenshot here, is Taiwan Semiconductor around 9.7, you know, somewhere uh, just shy of 10%. These fluctuate, of course, uh, but Taiwan Semiconductor about 10%, let's call it 10 uh, of SMH. So that is something that people call out and say, well, okay, you know, you can't look at SMH and, uh, and judge semiconductors as a whole because you've got this huge, huge outsized uh, weighting in SM or in, uh, in Taiwan semiconductor, excuse me. Also a very, very large weighting in NVIDIA as well. So those two, of course, accounting for nearly 20% of this group. So we can look to other corners of the, uh, the semiconductor space. We can look at other ways to play this space, uh, other measures of semiconductors as a group. One of them that comes to mind is SOX. That is uh, the iShares Semiconductor ETF. Now, it's been a similar story here for SOX though. This chart looks very, very similar. You can see the very strong scooter score here. And in 2021, we have spent a lot of time in those high scooter ranks. We can see a very similar price move. We can see uh, a lot of strength coming out of this group. And again, in a different flavor of semiconductors here, that being SOX with uh, different weightings, different uh, sort of composition of this ETF, even this different version of the semiconductor space still outperforming VTI by about 15% in 2021. This is again, a year to date chart. So even other flavors of semiconductors have still been outperforming if we kind of get rid of that Taiwan semiconductor specific exposure, we can still see a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors as a whole. And this kind of different weighting strategy here with SOX, we still have a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors. We can look at that same chart, that same group, the uh, SOXX ETF here in a two year chart. Again, very, very similar. We've seen this flavor of semiconductors outperform the total market by about 45% over the last two years. A very similar chart. We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of time spent there in the high scooter ranks. 
So here, what we are looking at is a different way to view semiconductors. We're actually removing that Taiwan semis uh, allocation here, uh, overweighting allocation here uh, that we had in, uh, in SMH. And here in the, uh, the top 10 holdings of SOC, you can see a very different composition. We do still have about 9% exposure to one specific stock. But in this case, this is actually Broadcom, so a different stock. We do have NVIDIA there, uh, which was a high weighting in SMH, but that is a little bit lower here in SOX. Now, there's still one knock, though, that you could say against both of these ETFs, and that's that they are cap weighted. So as you can see, once we get down to the bottom of the top 10 holdings, we're only at about a 4% allocation, a 4% weighting. And if we think of all the rest of the stocks in there, these top 10 holdings account for a significant percentage of this ETF. So a lot of people would say, okay, you can't look at semiconductors through either one of those ETFs and really kind of judge the whole space because you're really just looking at the largest stocks in that group. We can say the same thing about the total market ETFs. We can say the same thing about the S&P 500, for instance, or something like VTI. So what happens if we pull that out? What happens if we look at a different flavor of semiconductors yet again and try to look at the space more broadly? We have one other ETF that we can use to do that, and that is the, uh, the S&P Semiconductor ETF XSD. Now, what's unique about this is that instead of being a cap-weighted ETF, a cap-weighted index, we're actually looking here at an equal-weighted index. So the entire semiconductor space equal-weighted is what we are looking at here with XSD. That means that we are taking out that single stock bias. We're taking out that cap weighting bias, and we're actually looking at a broader group. So in, in, uh, in, in some ways here, what we're looking at is basically breadth of the, uh, the semiconductor index, uh, the semiconductor space, the semiconductor group. By looking at all three of these together, we're sort of judging semiconductors from a couple of different perspectives. And now bringing in XSD, we're actually looking at more semiconductor stocks, basically. By changing the weighting, we're actually bringing in more of those stocks. We're kind of uh, bringing in a little bit of a breadth view to semiconductors. The story is the same once again. We have seen a lot of strength out of semiconductors, even when we equal weight this group. So here, a little bit less, but we're still up at about 13% outperformance of the total market here for XSD in 2021. This is again, a year to date chart. Same story here with the scooter line. We have seen XSD spend a lot of time at the top of the scooter ranks, especially since really kind of late, uh, late October there, we've been, uh, been up in the very, very high nineties there for XSD, just like we saw with SMH and with SOX as well. So even when we bring in more of those semiconductors, even when we equal weight the group and we take sort of more of a flattened uh, view of the semiconductor space, taking out some of that single stock bias that we see with some of those other ETFs that track this space, we're still seeing a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors. That is a good thing. We want to see lots of strength coming out, the, out of that group, not just in one or two or three or four big stocks, but we want to see it reflected further down the cap tiers in that space as well. Over the last two years, we'll look at that same view here. We have seen XSD outperform the total market by 50%. So what's interesting about that is that that is actually more outperformance, better relative strength than SMH and SOX over the last two years. So the point here is that when we equal weight this space, we're still seeing a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors. And that means that this strength is really for the group as a whole. We can see this strength reflected more broadly by lots and lots and lots of semiconductors, uh, semiconductor security, semiconductor stocks and companies, uh, not just a handful at the very top, not just the biggest players in that space, but even the smaller names down the cap tier, we're still seeing a lot of strength coming out of semiconductors. Same story here. Over the last two years, we've seen XSD spend a lot of time at the top of those scooter ranks. And if we pull up the uh, the top 10 holdings here, just to uh, to further reiterate this, again, this is an equal weighted measure. So we are seeing very, very similar weightings. We don't have anything that's sort of outsized that's dragging us in one particular direction just because it is a high weighting. So across a couple of different flavors from a couple of different perspectives there, we have seen so much strength coming out of semiconductors. Again, the importance of that is one, if you are interested in that group, if that's something that you want to be allocated to, that has been an incredible place to be, not just in 2021, but really over the last couple of years as well. But more importantly, again, as a gauge of kind of 
positioning in the markets, offense versus defense, growth versus value. Uh, how good do we feel about this market versus you know how scared are the market participants? Uh, when we see semiconductors outperforming, when we see strength coming out of that group, that is just a very strong sort of uh, bullish metric for the market, something that's, uh, that long investors, that uh, the bulls out there can really kind of lean on. When you see semiconductors moving higher, outperforming, leading, when we see interest in that space, it really does just kind of make you feel good about being a bull. So that is my theme for 2021. My personal top 10 influential market event of the year, the strength that we have seen out of semiconductors powering their way to record highs and outperforming the market on the way up. I want to thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you have uh, tuned in to all of the other presentations that we've done as part of this special. We've had 10 of us on here each sharing our highlight from the year, things that stick out to us, things that matter, things that caught our eye in the market this year in 2021. Certainly a fascinating one. It has been a wild ride this year, especially coming off of the wild ride that we had last year with the uh, the COVID breakdown. This young bull market, though, off to a strong, strong start. Been a difficult market to trade, that's for sure, in 2021, but we've got uh, lots ahead of us. So definitely to take some time to uh, to review this year, this uh, this wild trading year that we've had with us all by checking out all of those other top 10 influential market events presentations. We've been doing those over the last couple of weeks, so I know that we have those up on our Stock Charts TV YouTube channel, as well as the on-demand platform at StockChartsTV.com. Lots of different ways to watch and check out all of that. Again, though, I want to thank you all for tuning in to this presentation. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Hope you have a wonderful Happy New Year, uh, prosperous start to, uh, to the new year 2022 and all of that is going to bring. Again, my name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com and it has been great to sit down with you here for this event. I will see you very soon for another special event, but until then, stay safe, have a happy new year and chart on my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.